Live from stage two, the best and only late night show in Chicago, it's Columbia Tonight! <laughs> to our executive producer, Kate McDermott. She, yeah, a round of applause for her. She had this vision over the summer and she gave me the opportunity to help create this with her. And it has been a long journey, uh, but we couldn't have done it without our incredible creative team of marketing, production, and writing. Uh, this is a completely student-run production and we are so proud of that. So proud of that. So A few introductions are in order. Uh, we have our phenomenal house band, the Columbia Tonight House Band. They are a group of incredibly talented musicians who've been together for only a couple of months, and look how good they are. Like, oh my gosh. Um, and my, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my announcer and our sidekick is the hilarious Patrick Jackson. <laughs> He's only a freshman, so go easy on him, even though he did have the audacity to ask for walkout music. <laughs> uh, it's Raining Men is a great song. <laughs> it is. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh, before we start, I want to give a huge shout out to our friends from the University of Pittsburgh, Pitt Tonight. They have been so supportive in starting our production and helping us in any way possible. Um, they got thousands of dollars in grants, and we got $700 in Monopoly money. Thank you, Columbia! <laughs> we have the fabulous Auntie Chan here with us this evening. <laughs> and later tonight, a special performance from Friday Pilots Club. <laughs> We have a great show for you guys tonight. Get excited. Give it up for the Columbia Tonight House Band. <laughs> Trump, 
That's because on the way to his polling place, he got distracted by a shiny object. <laughs> uh, it was actually uh, the gun that Dick Cheney buried in the yard. <laughs> problems such as slow elevators, random fire alarms, and no hot water. Uh, so if I'm late for class and I smell like shit, it's not my fault. Uh, still better than 666. I mean, uh, to be stayed, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Note 7 started exploding in people's pockets, and now 5 million washing machines are being recalled due to injury-causing mechanical failures. So we here at Columbia tonight would like to extend a formal request to Samsung. Please stop. <laughs> Please. A woman in Manhattan is suing the clothing company Zara after finding a dead rat sewn into the hem of her dress. Wow. The Ratatouille sequel sounds really f***ed up. <laughs> Researchers reported that a woman carried the Zika virus in her vagina for weeks. <laughs> hey, much better than some the parasites that some women choose to carry for nine months. <laughs> credit with the four there, dude. <laughs> the Obama's last Christmas in the White House is getting off to an early start. Barack got Michelle a pair of diamond earrings, Michelle bought him a silk tie, and Joe Biden made macaroni necklaces for everyone! <laughs> a nursing home on Chicago's north side was fined more than $100,000 after five residents overdosed on heroin inside the facility. Now, managers of the home have agreed to tone down the festivities surrounding bingo night. <laughs> the only plus side to women being underrepresented in politics is there are fewer pussies to be grabbed in the White House. <laughs> Dr. Kim has extended his contract to the year 2020. Meanwhile, my contract with my loan provider has been extended to 2048. <laughs> true. President Kim is also in the news for, being, for establishing this year's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion <coughs> Committee. Hey, at least we know one president who's got his shit together next year. <laughs> Montana closed after countless reports of vandalism and threats of violence. The vandals went on record to uh, deny any wrongdoing or guilt, saying that it was the owner's decision to make, and we shouldn't interfere with other people's personal choices. <laughs> I'm trying to raise my eyebrows, it's not working. <laughs> Donald Trump has taken to Twitter to clarify that the national bird isn't bald. And it isn't wearing a toupee either. It's its real hair. <laughs> Hillary Clinton lost the election last week because she's a career politician that has dedicated her life to politics and uses her political status to pass policies that affect the political system. Terrible traits for someone trying to get into the highest political office. <laughs> Yoko Ono unveiled a new sculpture in Jackson Park. This marks the second time she has ruined something that people like. <laughs> Finally, in a recent interview, creator of the Comedy Studies program, Anne Libera, commented on the admission of students at Columbia and how often we say, I can do that. She forgot to mention that statement is almost always followed by, hold my beer. <laughs> that Columbia is increasing tuition by $990 for the 2017-2018 school year. No round of applause for that, uh, no. Here are some of the things Columbia students could have spent that money on instead. 10 years of Netflix. 
50 cases of PBR, <laughs> one semester of community college. Gotta get those core requirements out of the way. God. 90 packs of cigarettes, 165 Devil Dogs milkshakes, 99 months of Tinder premium. <laughs> to Planned Parenthood. In Mike Pence's name, of course. In Mike Pence's name. And finally, one minute of Dr. Kim's time. <laughs> Winter break is almost here, and that means a lot of us will be headed home for the holidays to spend time with our families. Here are some Columbia Tonight holiday tips. Make sure to hug your friends extra tight because there's a 50% chance they'll drop out before February. That's true. Very true. Be prepared to explain to your grandparents that yes, you are getting a degree in comedy writing and performance. And no, it's not just clown school. <laughs> Eat lots of carbs so you have the stamina necessary to explain the concept of preferred pronouns to your older relatives. <laughs> Remember, no one wants the poem you wrote as a gift. <laughs> and finally, don't forget to flip your septum ring up into your nose, cover your tattoos, and dye your hair back to its natural color. <laughs> up next, the businesswoman who's always getting into your business, Auntie Chan. We'll be right back up to it. Driving 30 miles out here to see your kids applaud about marijuana. Yay! Yay! Marijuana! Okay. Um, so, uh, for those of you who may not know, um, I'm Auntie Chan, the businesswoman that's in people's business. I'm nosy, I'm problematic, um, but I have a heart of gold. I do, I really do. When people tell me, that's none of your business, I say, I'm a businesswoman, everything is my business, baby. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm, here's a segue, here's a segue that stand comedians do. Thanksgiving's around the corner. <laughs> around the corner. I feel like comedians are always coming around some kind of corner. Thanksgiving's around the corner. Um, this is for the moms out there, the moms and the aunts and the families. You're gonna like this family-friendly show. Here, here we go. My, my mom, uh, she, she was so upset last Thanksgiving because I said, you know, oh, thank God for this meal. She was like, thank God. I didn't know God sees in this turkey for eight hours. <laughs> I didn't know God was stirring those collard greens. I didn't know that. I didn't know God cut his arm opening a can of cranberry sauce. I didn't know God did that. I didn't know God did that. <laughs> oh, I'm starting to do my wig for a second. <laughs> oh, I almost spat on the mic too. Mm. I feel like I'm also a tip queen. I have tips, I have tricks up my sleeve. Um, for the people here that are for comedy, this is a little stand-up trick that I like to do. Whenever there's a punchline, I just run away. I run away, I really do. Um, here we go. Monopoly, sorry, chess, all these board games, but you wanna play me? <laughs> All right, that's the only example I give you. Yeah. Ooh, I wish you could taste this roll gold. This is so good. 
Another tip for stand-up is to come out as yourself, you know, be yourself on stage. People don't want to see you put on a, a character. The people don't want to see you hide yourself under something that, because it, it, it comes off unauthentic, like you're insecure about yourself and you need affirmation by putting on some kind of character, a wig, 50 shades of brown. What are you doing? So just be yourself, unless you're me. <laughs> That's my time. I got to get to a meeting. Thank you. Do you hate going to class? I hate going to class. <laughs> <laughs> well, do I got something in store for you? Introducing Doppelhanger, the hip app that allows you to hire your very own doppelganger to take your place in class where you get to stay home and just hang out. <laughs> How it works is, you send in a photo of yourself and our computers find your perfect lookalike to send off to your lame class. With our accurate computer-generated matches, your doppelhanger will go totally unnoticed. All right, class, so this is the symbol for pie. Mm-mm. I love pie. <laughs> With just three easy payments of fifty-eight seventy-four, this life-changing app can be yours. Download Doppelhanger today. <laughs> Judy. Thanks, Doppelhanger. a businesswoman that's in people's business. She takes she takes good care of business first. Like these one can we get get a hand for all of these wonderful hardworking people? This is wonderful. But yeah, she's essentially just this businesswoman that's really nosy. She has this archetype of like the dramatic aunt that's like at the Thanksgiving table that you don't want to talk to but you have to invite anyway because that green bean casserole, ooh, is killer. Sorry. Uh, so how, how did this idea form? Um, she started out as a bit, which <laughs> a lot of the... As all comedy as things, all comedy things do. Bits, yeah, I, I did this character a lot in like improv scenes. I would like initiate a scene like folding laundry. Uh, Full-time moms, am I right, ladies? And like all the female improvisers will step forward and join the scene. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I kind of like also pulled inspiration from like... Uh, people that I saw on entertainment and television, uh, like uh, Annalise Keating from How to Get Away with Murder, like the Viola Davis character. Ooh, there's three claps in the audience. Ooh, I feel y'all. Four, five, thirty. Wow. Um, and other like really powerful characters too, specifically like women of color, like Julie Chen and like Michelle Obama and Yoko Ono. I can't believe there was a Yoko Ono reference. I was like, I didn't know people still talked about her. I know she was still in the mainstream. Because I do, we know each other. Yes. Uh, 
So I, when last year when I was a freshman, I joined Improv Club, and you were on the executive board, right? Yes. He was on the executive board, and so as as Improv Club shows go, the executive board members will take a team each time they do a show. And I didn't go to very many uh, Improv Club rehearsals, but every time I did I go to the show, I was on your team. Yes. I, I was on your team every single time. Every and single you time. And you would do that, and we, all all the girls on the scene would one hundred percent jump up with you every single time. And, uh, <laughs> but you did Auntie Chang, you debuted at the Halloween show. Yeah. So I, really saw that. I yeah, I I've had this other brown bob wig that like got a lot of mileage out of it, but I had a I had a yeah, I had to put it down. Um <laughs> how, how do you go about putting a wig down, mask? Just put it in a Ziploc bag and say your days have gone by. <laughs> You're gonna have someone replace you and it's this Gorgeous ombre brown wig yes. that I'm wearing right now. Oh, it's on my head, yes. and it looks damn good. What? You. Yes. Absolutely. So, how does Auntie Chan kind of differentiate from a typical drag queen? Um, I feel like she is still a drag queen. I, I feel like when people think of drag queens, they think of like these very large depictions of women with giant wigs and like kind of like, in a way, kind of like a very woman-like mm -hmm. uh, feature, well, like his drag, so like drag queens, of course, it's gonna be woman-like, mm -hmm. but I don't wanna say the word intimidating, but like I've met a lot of people that have like seen drag queens for the first time and they're scared because like they're like, oh my God, this is like bigger than life. Um, and I feel like Auntie Chan differenti uh, differentiates from that because I kind of pull from like real women I know. I, I, this is like, this is a character that's inspired by like my mom, family, uh, people that I've worked with that kind of have these maternal embracing features. Um, moms in the crowd are probably loving this right now. <laughs> this is for you. This, what I'm wearing is for, for you. For all the moms. For all there. the moms. <laughs> if you're wondering about the turtleneck, it's TJ Maxx and I got the last one. Sorry, <laughs> darling. You slogan. should go. That's their slogan. <laughs> you only get this at Columbia Night, everyone. <laughs> so I did see, I'm surprised you didn't say Tina Turner in this, because you used her song for your playground drag race. I take it back. Oh. Tina Turner. <laughs> Proud Mary. Oh my god. Yes, I don't know why I forgot to mention, yes, Tina Turner. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Tina. So your, your playground drag race was an interesting show. Thank you. Yeah, it was this marvelous uh, show that was put on by this theater that's non for profit, ran by volunteers. Um, and I lip synced to Proud Mary, which is a wonderful story about a woman who left her job in the city and is now doing her own damn thing. Oops. I said, damn, sorry, family. <laughs> so, did you do anything weird during that? Show? Oh, you yes. I heard some crazy stories from this. <laughs> I was rolling in the river and I had this really big blue tablecloth, a little bit bigger than this, and I threw it on the ground. Um, and I was swimming through it the whole time. I was working that pun, milking it like a cow that just wanted you to just kill it. Um, and uh, like at the end where it was like the last rolling in the river, I like got in the river. And I'm probably out of frame right now, but I was rolling in it, right? <laughs> and I continued lip syncing it. And I thought, this bit is so funny. <laughs> dedication to your craft. Does that, that deserved a clap? Okay. So you are currently Ooh. at the Annoyance Theater, I've heard, right. for your holiday show for yes. December 18th. Yes. 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 Oh. Oh, I do. Oh, it's somewhere in here. Oh, that's, right so much there. that's so much bigger. It's the opposite. <laughs> it's what a, what a oh, fantastic. Uh, do you want wine? I'll give it to you after. Break, commercial break, folks. All right, well, um, while we're looking at this, we have a quick promo clip to show you guys. So Ooh, yes. Tip one, contour that nose. Grab your highlight um, and draw a straight white line down the middle of your nose. Look at that rich color. Straight, white, and rich. I'm listening. 
Now go ahead and blend that in, blend it, melt it, melt it like that melting pot. Love that American melting pot. <laughs> right, and we're going for the, um, the, the Western European standard narrow nose. Um, to land that job in that job interview, you have to hide all aspects of your ethnicity. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and practice squinting my nose, uh, making it really small. Hello, I am seeking an application of employment. Me and my very thin nose is seeking a job here. Sorry ma'am, we're not hiring. You start tomorrow. Breathe in. Fill the room with your energy. Breathe out. Feel the energy pouring in. Check out this composition. The lighting is amazing. Oh, the lighting on my camera isn't that good. I'm gonna have to get new lighting. Oh, that sucks. So, uh, what sorority you in? I'm in Theta Alpha, baby. Yeah. Let me guess, you're in Sigma Delta Diaper? Oh, how'd you know? Lucky guess. <laughs> So, uh, what's your sign? I'm a Gemini with a rising moon in Taurus. Hell yeah, so you're like calm, but like also serious? Yeah, crazy you could just figure me out like that. I feel like you know me already. Zodiacs don't lie, homegirl, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm an Aries with a falling moon in Aquarius. And like, so that means like that I can be nice, but I can also be mean. That's so hot. He's drinking downward, dog! Yeah, so I mean, I thought it was pretty great. He's doing the downward, dog! Oh, shit! <laughs> I, I, I love you! <laughs> You're like the best man that I've ever... your friendship so much you I know you're gonna make it okay because you're such a gift you you Me. you Me. are gonna <laughs> bring it in come here uh, 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 come here okay okay time okay. to get off come here Our musical guest tonight is an indie rock band formed right here at Columbia College. 
They just released their second EP, South State, available now on Spotify and iTunes. Here to perform their song, This Good Venom, give it up for Friday Pilots Club! <laughs>